Hi, and welcome to this section of the Matrix Algebra Tutor. And in this section, we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about uh, certain sub, uh, subsets of equations uh, that don't turn out to have any solution at all, or in fact, they may turn out to have infinitely many solutions, okay? And those are called inconsistent uh, and dependent systems, okay? So it's a complicating sounding title, but once we get through a few examples, you'll, you'll see with some pictures that I draw on the board here, it's not a big deal, okay? The bottom line is, you gotta understand a little bit of the terminology, okay? When you see something down that says inconsistent system, that's just code that means there's no solution to the set of equations you're trying to solve, okay? And when you see something that says dependent system, that's code, that means infinitely many solutions. If I had my way, I would rewrite the terminology because these, these words don't make any sense to me. But that's what it means. You either have no solutions at all or infinitely many solutions. Now, even those words themselves might have you scratching your head. How could you have no solution to a set of equations? Or how could you have infinitely many solutions, okay? And we're gonna talk about those there. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of background motivation first um, and then we'll just go from there. So let's begin, okay? Remember back from your early algebra when you first learned about a set of equations, you know, two equations, two unknowns, x and y, and you were taught how to solve those. You, you've learned now you can use matrices to actually reduce the matri matrices and, and solve the system, but you also learned in the past that you can graph them and find the intersection point of those lines because that's what you first learned how to solve systems of was, was equations in, in X and Y, it's a line, okay? And where those equations cross is the solution. That's what you're trying to find. Any of these systems of equations, really all you're doing is you're trying to find the common intersection point. The point in X and Y, and maybe Z if you have X, Y, and Z, point in X, Y, and, and Z where all of the three equations are common. That is what is the, the solution is. That's graphically what it is. If you were to draw it, it's the common point where they all intersect, okay? So if you remember back from your early, early algebra, what you were taught, and you may or may not remember this, most likely do remember this, is that just we're not even talking about um, you know three variables here like we've been dealing with these matrices so far. I'm talking about back to algebra one, algebra two, when you were taught how to plot a line. So here's line one, okay? And this line is y is equal to the slope times x plus uh, b. And I'm gonna put m1 here because I'm gonna draw two lines and they're gonna have different slopes. m is the slope, you should all remember that, okay? And then you're also taught that if I give you another line, and this line maybe does something like this, this line is y is equal to m2 times x plus b. Uh, we'll go ahead and put a 2 here, and we'll go ahead and put a 2 here, just because these equations are totally different. B is different in the equations. The slope is different in the equations. X and Y are just our variables, but basically you're plotting lines here, okay? Now, if I gave you these two equations, if I filled in numbers for the slope and for the Y-intercept, uh, you could solve that system. And one of the ways that you solve it is by drawing the lines on a graph paper and looking at the intersection point, right? So you would look here, and if this intersection point was at, you know, 3, 4, you would circle this and say this is the solution of the system of equations, okay? That's the solution of the system of equations. Now, the first way that you learned how to solve these things was by drawing them on your paper and figuring it out. You also learned how to do substitution, a couple of other methods, and we've also learned that matrices can be used to solve them as well and kind of keep it nice and compact doing the row reduction and all of that. We've learned about that. Although most of the matrices we've done to this point, uh, we were doing more complicated sets of equations with X and Y and Z because that is much more hard, uh, that's much harder to graph. You, you really can't graph that very easily, so matrices are really useful for that. But what I'm trying to show you here is always all along, the solution to these systems has always been the common intersection point from the very beginning of what you ever learned, okay? Now let me show you a different system. Let's say that I were to give you these two lines. Here's a line here. I'm gonna give you line number one. I'm not gonna write an equation for it because you could, you could write whatever equation that described this line, that's fine. Now let's go and look at a different line underneath it. Let's say here's a line right here. This line, not a very good line, it's supposed to be a straight line. This line is exactly parallel to the first line. Okay, and you know what parallel lines mean. They never cross. These two lines, are going to go on and on and on forever and ever and ever. Millions of miles that way and millions of miles this way, but they will never get any closer together because the slope of these two lines is exactly the same. 
So that means if I were to write the equations of the lines out here, these two slopes here would be equal. It would be like y is equal to 2x plus something. y is equal to 2x plus something else. The y-intercept will be different because if you extend these lines, the y-intercept is going to be different, but the slope is the same. Okay? This set of equation has no solution. Because, remember, the solution to a set of equations is exactly defined by where they cross, where they intersect, where their common point is. But these lines don't have any common points. They don't have any common intersection. So they have no solution. So what I guess I'm trying to build motivation for you here, when we get into these inconsistent systems, which is a code word I'm telling you, you'll see it in your book, it means no solution. Okay? You've been exposed to this all along. They just never called it this. Okay? Anytime you have two lines don't cross, that system doesn't have a solution. Okay? It just doesn't. If you tried to take these two equations that you would write and do substitution or something, you would find out that you can't solve it. And um, I'm not going to give you an example of that here. We're going to do some other things and move forward. But if you, if you were to try to do substitution or something, it just wouldn't work. Okay? So... Uh, what we're doing here is drawing an analogy. This is two variables, x and y. And you know from experience that as long as there's no squares here, you know, x squares or x cubes or anything, as long as it's just a regular old x, y equals mx plus b, those are lines. So in two variables, without any, you know, when you have all linear terms here, these are lines, okay? Now when you have three variables, x, y, and z, like we've been doing for all of our matrices um, in the previous sections, doing our row reduction and all of that, x, y, and z, three equations and three variables. Again, as long as there's no square terms anywhere, which we haven't had any so far, okay? Um, you're not going to be dealing with lines, you're going to be dealing with planes, okay? Now that's going to take a little bit of time for you to wrap your brain around, okay? But basically, if you have z, x, and y, and you try to plot it, you're not going to get a line. Because you have two independent variables, x and y, and you plug it into some equation and you get a third variable, z, what you're plotting is a plane in three-dimensional space. That's why it's so much harder to graph those things, to solve them by graphing, and why matrices are so good at, at, at helping you solve more complicated systems. Because it's really hard to graph planes and to figure out the intersection points. It's pretty easy to graph lines and figure out those intersection points, okay? So, let me give you an example, a practical example, of what a system of equations would look like in three variables like we've been dealing now, uh, in which case they, maybe they don't have a solution, okay? And, and we'll just kind of go from there. So I'm going to do my best to draw a picture first, and I hope this picture comes out well. We will see. So given that what I told you before, that... When you have equation in three variables, x, y, and z, as long as there's no square terms, which we haven't had any so far, um, that uh, those are going to produce planes, then let's just go ahead and draw a quick example here. What if the first of my three equations, okay, is this plane up here? And you have to use your imagination here a little bit. I'm drawing it on a two-dimensional board. You can think of this sheet of paper kind of sitting up here. That's a plane, and it goes on and on in all directions in this, in this plane in all directions, okay? Um, but it, of course it's only confined to, to move this way and this way. It doesn't go up and down. It's a sheet of paper right here, okay? So that's one of my plans. That's one of, that represents one of my equations. In all of the problems we were doing before, we had three equations as part of our matrix. This could be one of them, okay? Now let's say uh, the other equation, the second equation, is a plane down here. I mean, I could certainly choose an equation that would represent a plane that's below the first plane. So this is a sheet of paper up here. This is a sheet of paper up here. Okay? Now let's say the third equation, because we, up to now we've always been dealing with three equations and three unknowns. I'm going to go ahead and, um, and draw it in a different color to hopefully help here. Let's say the third equation was a plane that kind of, kind of started like this and kind of cut down over the other two. And again, this picture isn't the best, but I hope you can, you can see what's going on here. It intersects the plane here, and it intersects this plane here, right? So what you have here is a sheet of paper up here represented by the first equation, a sheet of paper down here represented by the second equation, and the third equation is a plane that cuts through the first two, okay? Now, let me ask you a question. If you were, tr if you were to actually graph these three equations, just as we've done here, okay, and I ask you, what's the solution to this system of equations? 
Well, you wouldn't be able to find one. There is no common point for all three equations. I mean, you have some common points here. Sure, this plane intersects this one. All of these points along this little intersection joint, so to speak, are all common to these two equations, these two planes. And of course, you have some common points between this plane and this one, right? But there is no common points common to all three. And when you have three equations and three unknowns, you're looking for solutions to all three equations common points of all three. That's what it is. If you have ten equations and ten unknowns, you're looking for the common point for all ten variables and all ten equations. Same thing here. It's very scalable. It's, you're looking for that common point. So you can see graphically it's very possible to pick some equations out of thin air that would never have a solution because they may not all cross at the same points. Okay.